Okay, Mr. Cult of Air. We have reached a bit of an impasse. And the impasse is because you answered my first question with a question. And now we have walked down a side road when we're, we are debating my answer to your question. Now, in brief, this is where we're at so far. And then we're going to move on and we're going to try to address my original question. The theological argument that I put forth is that God is both lawmaker and lawgiver at the exact same time. Now you've bogged me down into how can this possibly be true? And I tried to explain an analogy. You go into a room. The room is dark. You turn on a light. That light is now both light in the room and creating light in the room. It is both created and creator, just like God. This is why God has no beginning and no end. And, incidentally, why God cannot be understood by human beings. Why he is completely beyond our understanding. Now, you say you have to understand. For the purposes of what we are discussing, that is sufficient. What I said to you does not have to be proven right or wrong. We can try, but that will take months, years, and who knows. It is a theological argument. It is just the first answer to your question, so now we can get to the thing that I originally asked. We can debate it, but it's not the main question. The main thing I brought up, and I said to you, if there is no God, there is no such thing as subjective morality. Now, this leads us to two places right off the bat. I am not saying you are one of the atheists who is in the camp that says we are a cosmic accident. And any of you other atheists listening, there are only two choices. We are either a cosmic accident, as many atheists assert, a, you know, a random occurrence, or there is a God. If you don't think we are a random occurrence, you are a theist, but you don't realize it. Now, you might not be a Christian, but you're some, you, have, you haven't really examined your beliefs. You have some sort of theological underpinning. It may be vague and Eastern, like, you know, we're all part of some life force and life energy. But if, the, if we are not a random occurrence, if you reject that idea, you're already in theist territory. Already. So, you're not really an atheist. Now, if there is no God, if we are a random occurrence, and some of you out there believe that, herein lies the problem. And there are, there are many philosophers who addressed atheism, or at least touched on atheism, and would come up against this moral problem, and they would try to address it, and none of them were successful. If we are a random occurrence, then there is no innate right or wrong. Nothing you do actually matters. And it's not just some sort of hippie concept like, hey man, nothing matters. It's actually nothing matters. I could go down the street today and kill somebody, and what's wrong with that? If we're a random occurrence, what, what difference does it make? None. There's no real right and wrong. Now, why this already starts to point to the, to the existence, evidence of the existence of a God, is because we all sort of know, in our hearts... Buried in there is a moral compass. Now, I would assert that that is put there by God. But we all sort of know it's there. Because even, even little children have innate senses of right and wrong. They're primitive, but they're there. You can't kill that person. Why? It's wrong. It's just wrong. If there is no God, there is no, it's just wrong. There is no reason why Nazis were evil. And if you actually are honest and you start looking at real evil, and you're a decent human being, you feel morally revulsed by it. It starts to, to bother you down deep. You feel some sense of revulsion, some sense of upending of something. What is being upended is a sense of cosmic order, is a divine sense of right and wrong that was put in your heart before the beginning of time by God. 
That is what is being, when you, when you see something and recoil at how evil it is, you are, you are seeing basically blasphemy in action and you are responding in the depths of your heart. And your response is as if there were a God, even if you're an atheist. That's why, that's what, why all the atheists say, I can be a good person without a God. Yeah, if there were no God. But if there is a good God, you could be an atheist and still have access to God in your heart without even realizing it. How could that be? Because God is actually there. The Bible even says this. You guys play a lot of games with the Bible and pretend you know a lot of scriptures, but you only know the ones that that you that argue against Christianity. You only know the ones that condone slavery. You only know the ones where, where God orders a genocide. So you go, ha, 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 look, how can God be perfect? But you don't know the ones that actually start to really get inside what is wrong with your worldview. The Bible tells you there are plenty of people in this world. This is the Bible. This isn't my idea. There are plenty of people in this world who automatically do what's right and wrong. They have an innate sense of right and wrong. And the Bible then goes to say, that's how we know that this comes from God. Because people who have never heard of Jesus do kind of normally good people do what Jesus tells them to do in the scriptures. They do it kind of automatically. So you can be an atheist and be a really good person. But you're actually doing the commands of Christ. Intuitively, instinctively. You're doing it by yourself. But that... That doesn't mean that God isn't influencing your heart. He is. So, that's the real issue with the moral, with the atheist moral code. Is that, it's not that atheists can't be good people. Of course they can be good people. Because many of them are. But the good that they are doing is actually, automatically, intuitively, the same things that Christ teaches people to do. They are loving their neighbor as themselves. That is how you know that Christ's teaching is from God. Because when regular, decent human beings live correctly, they fall exactly into the pattern. And this, when you start pulling scriptures out of, you know, I'm not going to say your rear end because they're in the Bible, but when you start pulling scriptures out of context to prove the Bible wrong, you're, you're violating the whole point of the Bible. The Bible doesn't say, make sure you read where God commands, you know, a genocide or you won't get how to live like a Christian. It commands you, the Christian, to live a certain way. And it does it routinely. And the foundation of the Christian faith has nothing to do with the scriptures that you pull out of your hat. Even though they're in the Bible, we can get to that. But when a decent human being who is an atheist automatically does the things that Jesus teaches. Automatically. And everyone goes, what a good person. He is acting in ways that are, that are taught by the scriptures. And if there is no God, if we are a cosmic accident, there is no reason that good is actually good. Good does not exist. It is a fake human concept. There's no reason why Nazis were evil. There's no reason why killing somebody is evil. If, if we're just a cosmic accident, it doesn't make any difference at all. And that automatically starts to violate something deep inside of you. Because that deep inside of you thing, that deep knowing of right and wrong, or that deep sense of, of innate that some of you are more available to than others, and some atheists have a really strong sense of it, that's God-breathed, God-ordained.